illustrate those D-Day invasion white stripes. Again, all aircraft flying over Normandy, the troops under immense pressure in life-threatening situations. It is important to delineate friendly aircraft from enemy aircraft and these white stripes beautifully stand out for us all today as they would have done uh, all those years ago on the June beaches of 1944. Beautiful iconic aircraft, very popular on the circuit. A wonderfully uh, powerful and evocative version of the Mark uh, aircraft. This indeed aircraft is painted up in blue, indeed 143 operational missions in a remarkable wartime career. Spanned almost three years in operations, initially allocated to Trouble 2 Natal Squadron in North Wales, Natal the South Africa Squadron. The aircraft damaged during force landing. Reallocated to 130 Squadron of Cornwall flying convoy protection patrols and escorting daylight raids. Transferred to cross to an Eagle Squadron, a US Air Force Spitfire unit at Biggin Hill, flying 29 operations with this unit. And currently painted up as uh, AB910, including fierce aerial battle in support of Operation U Lead at the end of the raid. This aircraft continued to fly operation until July 1944, serving with a number of other squadrons and indeed serving with a 402 Royal Canadian Air Force squadron. Three patrols, patrols and covered the D-Day invasion beachheads on June 6th of June 1944 and afterwards. From thereafter, it was given a break and this aircraft was rested and ultimately found its way into the hands of the Babylon Flight in 
1990s. Wonderful aircraft, incredible history, a remarkable career commemorated now. The elliptical wing was uh, and the indeed super wing Spitfire developed by the incredible aircraft designer by the name of RJ Mitchell. Sadly, didn't get to see the final iterations. Some 20,000 Spitfires essentially designed, modified, improved and built over 12 years. Some 20,000 built flying all the way until the early 50s. The uh, RJ Mitchell sadly he died in 1937 and this is uh, his design assistant Joe Smith. He actually took on much of the design and improvement work. He kept the Spitfire a living, breathing, modified prototype again. The power of the engine increased threefold from 1,000 to over 2,000 horsepower in the version of the Griffin. Each of the wings showed a development, change in both power, speed, and packing a punch in terms of the balance of these aircraft were meant to be a lethal, fast, and powerful country. Incredible advances in design, the incremental gains that their enemies over the water were making in terms of the measurement and possible fighter threat. Uh, number the final version of the uh, Spitfire, the Seafire Mark 24. Again, these aircraft incredibly powerful, very difficult. The D by the end demonstrating counter-rotating propellers, huge increases in their bearing speed. The aircraft just touching the nudging the edge of the speed of sound. Again, it's really dangerous for the pilots to fly as they approach the sound barrier requiring all sorts of research, modifications, the aircraft barely recognisable from their initial RJ Mitchell design back in 1938. Spitfire now running in. Andy Priest is a former navigator, then we're going to carry a pilot. He's a rocket handover to the US, so wonderfully flying. Andy Priest has been flying for 15 years now, and he's an absolute bird of joy to fly over the Memorial. learning how to fly these historical aircraft, living memorials, jewels in the crown of the Royal Air Force. Takes time, takes immense care and skill and talent. And sucks to be taking over a few years after Disco, who takes over after squadron leader Andy Millick in the camp boss. And here now, stage of front and centre is the Harrogate. Slightly straighter wing that hand formed the design. It represented the early mid 30s version of uh, Hawker uh, Aircraft Company, Sydney Cam. Uh, these aircraft, very sturdy design, reflect, reflected the new design for speed and power, the single monoplane, uh, armament, defended in the wings. Easy to repair, quick to get back on the front line with her and back. 
This aircraft LF363 is one of the early Mark II ones and it's been kept for posterity and it was kept by the Hawker Company as one of the last ever built and kept for the Royal Air Force in the UK for the nation for us to see today. So here we are, gentlemen, the last pass. Let's move to the fighting pair.